As designers, I'm pretty sure we're all looking for ways to make our lives just that little bit easier. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a quick tip with Affinity Photo that does just that, make our lives a little easier. Now, if you have collateral from a client, it could be a logo, branding, a brochure, or even something as simple as just an image. We can use that as the basis for our color schemes. Then, we save them either to the project, the document, or create a shareable color palette that allows us to have consistent colors throughout the entire design process. So let's open up Affinity Photo and I'll demonstrate how easy and useful this can be. I've already loaded an image in that we're gonna use for the basis of this. And as you can see, we've got a lot of nice, strong, vibrant colors inside here. So what we're gonna do is make sure we've got the swatches panel over on the right-hand side, have that open. And as you can see, I've already got one color palette set up inside here that's been taken from a different image. And as you can see, it tells me what image that's been taken from. So what I can do is I can put this little pop-out in the top right-hand corner. We can click on that. Unfortunately, you can't see this properly because of the way that it opens up inside the window. But what we're looking for is to either create a palette from the document or create a palette from the image. So if we create a palette from the image, we can load any doc, any image we want to in. Or if we choose create palette from the document, it's going to work on the currently open document. And then, like I say, we can save this as an application palette. So that's global. It can be used anyway or as a document palette, which is specific to this particular document. So let's do the document palette first. Let's take a look at that. We click to open that up and you can see that automatically creates a color palette directly from it. Now that's pretty cool and very easy to do. And as you can see, it tells us that this is taken from the file name that we sort of have open right now. Click to open that up. You can see we've got all the different color palettes available and we can jump back to this fresh green broccoli, which is the previous example. And I'm gonna do just that. So if I click on that, you can see that now replaces it with that previous color palette that I just showed you. Now, if we go back to this list, you can see that the image that we've taken these colors from, that's no longer available to us. That's gone, that's disappeared. So that's one way of working with it, which is okay. For me, I prefer to come down to the create palette from image because it gives us more control over what we want to do. Let's click on that. And this opens up a nice simple window that just says select the image. So we're going to click on select image and we're going to just open up that same image. So we'll say open. That will pull that image in. And as you can see, it now creates a basic color palette starting off with five colors. So this gives us more control now. What we can do is we can adjust the number of colors. As you can see, we could take this right up to 256 colors. Click preview. And that's going to go and create a color palette of 256 colors, shades, those kinds of things. Now, obviously, that would be a little too much for a typical design project where you maybe want to work with, you know, sort of five or six different colors. But what you can do is drop this down to something like 12, for example. And this is going to give you a good broad range of colors. So we click preview. You can see that now pulls in a nice range of shades. We've got oranges in there, browns, all those kind of rustic tones. So if we were creating a website or a print document or something like that, we've pulled in colors that are going to be perfectly usable inside our design based upon this specific image. Then underneath that, we've got the location. Now, the location is where do we want this color palette to be assigned? Click and open that up. We've got application, like I said, becomes global. Document specific to this document or currently selected palette. So if we just choose application, that will then create another dedicated palette pulled from this specific image. Document will work like it did the last time and currently selected palette will append to the current palette we have open. So let's test those out. Let's first of all say currently selected palette. Click on create and you can see that now appends it to that palette. So now we have my previous color palette and this new color palette associated with it. If we come back out of here, go to gradients, for example, then come back to the fresh broccoli, you can see it's all associated with it because this is an application-based palette. Let's come back up and do the same thing again. Let's just say we're gonna to come to the option for create palette from image. We'll load that same image in again. Click on open, let that go through. We'll set this up to 12 as well. We may need to let that load. There we go, 12, we'll preview that. This time, we're going to say we want this to be application to a click create. Now that replaces the original one with this new color palette. And you can see it's named vegetables NUBT, which is the file name that we have for this. Obviously, it make more sense if we name these files a little bit better, a bit more memorable. But we can click and expand and you can see the broccoli one is still in there with the appended colors. 
and our vegetables is in this. So we're now creating dedicated color palettes and pulling that information directly from the image that we want to either load in or we have available on screen any one time. So to me, this is a great way of being able to create great color palettes without the need of having to go and find color combinations. And you can use this as a starting point. You could use this as a jumping off point. You could use this in any number of different ways. I think it's absolutely brilliant. It's a really cool feature. Now, the other useful feature is if you're using the other Affinity programs as Affinity Designer or Affinity Publisher and you want to access those palettes, while it would be nice to have simple cross-application sharing of a palette so we could save them to the cloud or to a local machine, currently we can't do that, so I'm hoping it's something they will allow, we can still load those palettes in. So what we could do is we can simply save a palette out. So for example, we can choose this visuals palette. We can click and we can say export palette. We can then drop that where we want to. So I've already created this. You can see there's my vegetables palette. So I've done that. I'm going to open up Affinity Designer and we're going to come up to that palette. So we've got the swatches panel open, click. We're going to choose import palette and you can see we can import an application or a document palette. Now we can't open a document one because we currently don't have a document open. So if we just create a new document and we simply just choose anything from there and click on create. We come back in, say import palette, we'll say as a document palette, we'll associate it with this document. There's our palette. Click OK, and there is our color palette pulled in. So we can very easily create a color palette in any of these applications and then load them in and share them either on an application or a document level. So if you do have the Affinity tools, I'd recommend taking a look at this because a unified color palette just makes the whole process super simple and be able to sample those colors directly from images, logos, and any other kind of collateral really does open up a ton of very useful time-saving possibilities. So that's how we can create custom and consistent color palettes by using Affinity Photo and this incredibly useful feature. All of the applicable links for everything I've covered in this video are in the description below. And if you want to take a look at more things you can do with Affinity Photo, take a look at the videos you can see on screen right now. As always, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tats, and until next time, take care.